What's up everyone, me JP2 here. And first of all, I wanna say sorry for not uploading this yesterday. I was extremely busy and could not get to the editing, but that is why I'm going to be getting it out today. Uh, but anyways, I did hit veteran ELO, which is, this is the second time I've done it because I usually don't care enough to actually climb, but I decided I might want to for some video ideas. Like there's another video idea I have with, uh, I'm going to be hunting Zygarde in the Master League, but that is a kind of a high elo thing. So I will need to climb to actually find Zygarde. So I do plan on doing that. Now, also for the Ultra Premiere, a lot of people, they don't build teams with accounting for a water fairy type because Tapu Fini is banned and Azumarill just is, does not reach a high combat power. However, Azumarill, because it, it's not very much prepared for, it just kind of core breaks teams. And I think that's really fun. So let's get to the battles. All right, so into the first battle and we see Annihilate on the lead. Now, a fairy type into a fighting type should be good, but there is the massive combat power difference gap to take into account. And despite being at 1,800 combat power, Azure tanks that Shadow Ball quite well. Now I can go for a play rough. This will hit for some pretty heavy damage. The opponent does shield it, and now, they're going to th have to throw a move if they want me to not be able to make it to a move. Thing is, if it's an Ice Punch or an Ice Slash, it doesn't take Azu out. Now, this play rough will land, and while it doesn't take him out, it does some pretty nice damage, and honestly, getting a shield advantage and giving Lorantis farm is nice. Now, for this battle, this is the one I, did I forgot to TM my Lorantis before this battle, and I'm stuck on Fury Cutter and Leaf Storm for this battle. But, frankly, having Leaf Storm is nice here, because my opponent switched out. Now, I get to land a Leaf Storm and just switch out as well. Well, they do make it to an Akazuka, and I like tanks it, and so the Akazuka lands, no debuff, thankfully. Now, let's see what the opponent decides to do. They send in Tentacruel, and, I mean, up this much energy, and I like should be able to win this game for us. Now, I can go for an Ice Slash, the opponent shields the bait. I was, I know that I have to go for at least a Shadow Ball and an Ice Slash, to actually take out a Tentacruel, so I always go for the Night Slash first. The opponent tries to catch on to their own Annihilate, and I can just go for my own Night Slash. That takes out their Annihilate. Now there's not really anything I can do to lose here, as I can just go for the Shadow Ball, and if I really want to, I could probably switch into Lurantis and make it to a move. They're, they're just forced to throw here, and they have to go for a, a Scald or something. They actually have Sludge Wave, though. And that does take out my Lurantis, so I'm, I am pretty glad I switched there. And now I can go for a Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball will just take out the Tentacruel, and I am able to take that game. We see Galvantula on the lead of the next battle. Now, Galvantula core breaks my team. So I have to switch into Annihilate. Typically, if you're running an ABA-style team, like if you're ABA weak to something, you don't want to switch into your hard counter, because then you just can end up just losing. But thankfully, I get a boost on my Annihilate, and now the opponent can go for a move here. I call that it's a lunge, it is. Now, they can go for another move here. I will be shielding on... Even if it is another lunge, I want to preserve some HP. They do go for the Discharge, though, which is nice, because now there's no debuff. Now I can just go for another Night Slash. The opponent lets it go, and they have to keep in mind, I'm still one stage boosted. They send in Ampharos, and even though my attack was debuffed once by them, it's it was buffed twice. So that Shadow Ball plus the counters take them out. Now, they send in a Jellicent, and now I can go for a Night Slash. This will do some nice damage, and I can just send in Lorantis, and this game's over. My opponent realizes it, and they can see the match. Yeah, this I got a 5-0 set with this team for some reason. We see Shadow Dragonite on the lead in the next battle. Opponent sends in for Alligator, and I just switch into Lorantis. Now they can go for a move here. They're not at an Ice Beam. They go for a Crunch. I tank that. I'm still not really in a range to get farmed down. And I do win CMP with Lorantis. That's what I like about Lorantis. It does win CMP against Gator which means that you can basically ensure that you keep switch no matter what. And the opponent can go for Hydro Cannon. Now they could probably double shield and farm down, but they probably don't want to be down, uh, down shield to the Shadow Dragonite, so they decide to no shield. Now I can send an Azumarill, and this Dragonite, despite this Azumarill being 1,800 combat power, this Dragonite will still get one shot by an Ice Beam. They throw a superpower, and then they send in their own Annihilate. I can go for a Play Rough just to soften up their Annihilate, and then I can send in my own. Now, this should be pretty close to Night Slash range. They can go for a Shadow Ball, but 
Annihilate in the Ultra League actually tanks a Shadow Ball, although not very well, and their uh, Annihilate will still have a bit of trouble farming down. So now, they can go for a Shadow Ball, doesn't take out my Annihilate, and I will make it to another Night Slash. Now this Night Slash will take them out or grab their shield, and I'm assuming they're not going to want to go and um, leave Azumarill up against the Dragonite. So they do shield, trying to pressure my shield back. I don't care if it was a Night Slash out shielding anyways. They send back in the Dragonite, and they can go for a Dragon Claw or a Super Power. Dragon Claw, it's double resisted, does nothing. Now I can go for an Ice Beam. Now Ice Beam will just take out the Dragonite. And now you can go for one more Bubble. Bubble takes out the Annihilate, and we do take that game. We see another Shadow Dragonite leaving. Now, I'm not even kidding, these battles were just in order. And I did get a 5-0 set with the team. The opponent tries to catch the Ice Beam on a Greedon, and I can just send an Annihilate. Now, Annihilate kind of annihilates Greedon, and so they can go for a Trailblaze. Problem is, I still tank another Trailblaze, so I have no reason to shield their next move either. They can go for another Trailblaze if they really want to, but honestly, I might be able to just get a full farm down. They don't make it to another Trailblaze, the best they can do is make it to another Body Slam, and Body Slam will not take out Annihilate from this range, despite being double boosted. Now, it does get me pretty low, and the Dragonite does win CMP, so I'm guessing they didn't want to lose, well, didn't want to have to shield the Shadow Ball. And then I send in Lorantis after they switch out, and they have Lantern, and yeah, this game's over. They can shield the Leaf Blade, or they can no-shield it, but this game's just completely over, as they can go for a Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt will do not much to Lorantis. My opponent realizes that and concedes the match. We see Gliscor on the lead in the next battle, and this is a pretty good lead as Ice Beam will just destroy Gliscor. Now the opponent, I, they do try to catch, and I can send in Lorantis. Now, once again, I do win CMP. Leaf Blade fully one-shots for Alligator, so the opponent actually lets it go, and they just get one shot. That works for me. Now, if they want to send in Gliscor, they can, but they will have to eat a Leaf Blade. Even if they go for an Aerial Ace, Lorantis isn't glassy enough to get taken out. They do go for a Night Slash, though, and Night Slash does get me kind of low, but they still have to go for another move to try and take me out. It looks like they are just throwing away the Gliscor, and I do lag here, which is really annoying, but it looks like they would have made it to the move anyways. They go for the Night Slash. Now, I send in Azu, and they immediately send in Tentacruel. Now, I go for a Play Rough. I don't really know why. But the play rough does some okay damage. I sent an Annihilate, and the opponent is going to have to just tank Night Slashes. I decide to go straight for a Night Slash. The opponent shields it. In all honesty, I have no idea why they shielded the first Night Slash. But this is veteran ELO. I honestly kind of expected better. But now I can just go straight Shadow Ball, honestly. Even if they go for an Acid Spray here, they're still 8 off the next Scald. So I'll be able to make it to another Shadow Ball before they're able to actually take me out with anything. They do go for an Acid Spray. I was not surprised in the slightest to see that. They even try to catch. But now, they can go for another Acid Spray. I can just shield. And I am not in one po Poison Jab range. And the opponent realizes that and concedes the match. You see Skeletor on the lead in the next battle. Now this looks good on paper, but since my energy is fully walled, this is not good at all. Now I am going to throw and farm up to seven try and go for the hydro pump i wouldn't i wouldn't blame my opponent for for switching out after they do they send an ingredient now ingredient will be met with annihilate now let's see if this ingredient's on crunch or trailblaze they're on crunch and we get a bit of lag but it looks like the game actually caught up there now i did lose count of my opponent's energy because of that though which is kind of annoying but it doesn't really doesn't really affect me because i should be able to just go for another night slash now they go for crunch crunch gets the debuff and now, I can go for Night Slash here. They can shield if they want to and get my shield back, but they decided to not. Now, they can send back in the Skeletor, and I should be able to make it to another Night Slash after this one. Because one more Incinerate does not KO, so I do make it to a second Night Slash. Now, this Night Slash will get them fairly low. Now, I can send in Azu. Now, they can go for a move here. I do have to shield, because if it's a Shadow Ball, I just get taken out. It is the disarming voice, of course, and then they send in a bomb of snow. Now I go for the ice beam here. I'm hoping to grab a shield because Lorantis, if it had no shields, the superpower could take him out. But unfortunately, they do have an energy lead now. So even if I go for a leaf blade and they shield it, they will be able to make it to back-to-back -back weather balls before I make another superpower. So I do have to let one of the weather balls go through, 
and that does way too much damage. We just get farmed down, and at this point, this game is over. Because Azumarill is not very attack weighted, and is also just completely at a CP disadvantage, it is going to not take him out with a play rough. This play rough, well, it does hit respectably hard, does not take out the Obama Snow, and we do get farmed down. We see Obstagoonum lead in the next battle. Very good lead. The opponent sends in Sylveon, and now I can just send in Lorantis. But the problem with this is the opponent, they can probably just force switch by double shielding, as Charm is just going to do so much damage. Now, I throw here, and if I'd thrown and they had gone for another Charm, I could have been in trouble. But now, since it was CMP, they can just go for a Psy Shock, but I can shield. And now, it does look like they can double shield and farm down, but I will be able to grab both their shields, and in all honesty, that's fine. Now I can go for the Leaf Blade, and though I do get the farm down, losing Switch is not devastating here, because Annihilate still just wrecks Optigoon, so it doesn't really matter what gets aligned against it. As it gets the full farm down, and the opponent does have Tentacruel in the back, the opponent sends in Obstagoon, but they're, they saw Ghost-type, thought Obstagoon, but this is one of the Ghost-types that just kind of destroys Obstagoon. So, unfortunately for them, I can actually CMP tie him as well, just to deny their energy. So I wanted to save my shield, because I didn't want to risk getting farmed down. Now, I can just go for a Night Slash. This Night Slash, I throw it before the Shadow Ball, because if it does get the boost, which it does, now the next Shadow Ball is going to do a ton of damage. I shield, it's the Acid Spray, of course, but now I can just go for the Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball does a ton of damage. We switch into Azumarill and get the farm down with Azu, and we do take that game. We see another Shadow Dragonite lead. And now, Azumarill just destroys Dragonite, we've seen it before. Now, I can farm up, I overfarm, the opponent tries to catch on to Feraligator. And granted, Azu actually does fully wall Feraligator's energy. But because Hydro Cannon is so spammy, Feraligator actually does beat Azumarill. Now, I just send in Lorantis, take him out. Now, the opponent is sent in the Dragonite, but the Dragonite actually throws a move. They probably could just farm down if they wanted to. And I should have farmed up to a superpower here, but I didn't. I just went straight Leaf Blade, and they can no shield that, as it does virtually nothing. I can send in Azu, and while they can go for a move here, they can't really hit Azu. Dragon Claw does not much. The opponent sends in Tentacruel, and I set an Annihilate, and they concede the match. Now, I don't really think that was over, but it, my opponent must have thought it was. But in the next battle, we see Feraligator on the lead. And I said earlier that Feraligator actually does beat Azu, and you're going to see that here. Despite Azu just hardballing Feraligator, Hydro Cannon does so much damage, and Shadow Claw is also able to do quite a bit. So while I can go for the play rough and get them pretty low, they should be able to just make it to another Hydro Cannon and get a full farm down. I probably won't even make it to another Ice Beam. They go for the Hydro, and they get a perfect farm down, and that really is not good for this. As now, they can go for a move. I have to shield because Ice Beam would nearly one-shot me. And while I do leave with energy on Lorantis, if they have a hard counter, I couldn't just be in massive trouble. Now, I will be going for back-to-back -back Leaf Blades. Now, two Leaf Blades should come pretty close to one shot. Sorry, not one shot. It should come pretty close to KOing the Annihilate. So I can go for a second Leaf Blade. And now, they have to go for a move to take me out. If they go for a Night Slash, I don't get taken out. If they're running Ice Punch, though, I will. I actually don't, though. And then I send in a, my own Annihilate, and they have Swampert. Now, Annihilate does win CMP, and I'm going straight Shadow Ball. I'm not baiting. My opponent does shield it, though, and that's not good. Now, I can just let the Hydro Cannon go through, as one does not take me out. Now, they will outpace me, which is not good, but I realize my win con is probably to just let Annihilate get taken out, and get a farm down with Lorantis, but we get Simul KO'd, and they had a Pokemon in the back, so they win. Hopping into the final battle, and we see another Annihilate on the lead. There was not much variety on the leads, just for Alligators, Dragonites, and Annihilates, and... While well, the opponent can go for Shadow Ball here, we've, we've seen before, not going to do much. Well, relatively. But they send in for Alligator, and I should be able to just send in Lorantis. This is not a nice beam. It's crunched and farm up to 7. Now I can just farm up and CMP tie him on the Hydro Cannon. Now, if they want a shield, they can, but I'll just match. And so they just let it go. They send back in the Annihilate, 
and if they want to go for full farm down, they are going to have to take two leaf blades. So while they can tank one, they will have to shield a second, and they decide that's not worth it. Now they go for an ice punch, that will take me out. Now I can send an Azu. I'm fully expecting them to catch, but they actually don't. I went for an ice beam just in case they did, and like try to catch under like a flying type. The ice beam doesn't take them out, and they send in Luxray. So I need mad props to them for running Luxray, but I think I have the spicier team. And Annihilate, unfortunately, can just take them out, as even though they have Psychic Fangs, which will debuff my defense, I can just kind of just brute force through them with counter, and we get the boost. Oh no. Yeah, this Luxray is not long for this world, as with the boost, this Night Slash, they will get shielded, but now we just farm them down. And, well, we actually don't get a farm down. So this could actually be close now. They go for Psychic Fangs, does take out Annihilate, but I do have the Ice Beam loaded, so... If they had managed to catch, they could have won this game, but I don't think their timer is up as it gets a farm down, and we do take that game. Overall, this thing's fun. This was suggested to me in, after I made a community post asking what, what you guys wanted me to run at Veteran, and someone said Azumarill, and I thought that that was pretty interesting because a lot of people don't build teams with the Water Fairy type in mind, especially in the Ultra Premiere, simply because of the fact that Tapu Fini is banned. Now, there are some things that are annoying about running Azu, mostly the fact that it just still loses to Feraligator because of Feraligator's raw damage output, but besides that, it's actually not terrible. Anyways, that's pretty much it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.